There we go. I wanted to take you here first. This is your week four module. Here are modules over here. I'm in Canvas, and I just wanted you to see um, what is available to you now and what's going to be available. Uh, here's the first homework we're going to do, the second homework, the third homework. I'm going to be uploading reviews of factoring that you can can look at and work with if you need to, but it's optional. And I'm going to be uploading a review of complex numbers. Um, it's optional. You don't need to do it, but if you need to, that's fine. Something else that's optional is if you have a printer at home, you might find it easier to go ahead and print off these three blank documents, at least they're supposed to be blank, and here's what they look like. Here's one of them. Yeah, this is the worksheet we're going to be working with for the first set, and they all look like this. They just have different problems. And we're going to talk about what quadratic equations with rational solutions means. So we are going to talk about that, but I wanted to show you this. I've I've changed around the uh, the modules so that next week is our exam week, and this week we're going to be uh, learning how to solve or relearning because this is something you did in intermediate algebra, even if you don't remember it. All of this is today. Nonetheless, we're going to be treating it like it's new. Um, solving quadratic equations with rational solutions, irrational solutions, and complex solutions, and I will make more explanations as we go along. Okay, so there's that, and now let's start the lesson. Okay, well, first, what is a quadratic equation? We're going to review that. A quadratic equation is an equation. It has an equal sign. Equal sign. It has stuff on the left and stuff on the right. And somewhere in there, is highest power two. And it ought to be in front like that, but sometimes you have to rearrange. So I'm going to write the word quadratic, Q, U, A, D, and I'm going to put a dash and then R, A, T, I, C. Expressions and equations with highest power two are called quadratic. And so we're going to solve this using factoring because we can. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> go over the different factoring methods that we use. And I would have extra classes on it, and extra class at least, but we just don't have time. So here we go. Here's how you solve a quadratic equation that is factorable using the methods I'm going to talk about. Okay, so here's our quadratic equation, t squared plus 8t T is acting like X equals 9. Um, the first thing I need to do is move this over a little bit. We have to use something called the zero principle. Excuse me. And here's what that is. 
I have to have a zero over there, not a nine. So what I do is whatever's over here, I'm going to subtract it over to the other side. Minus nine, minus nine. What that gives me is t squared plus 8t minus 9 equals 0, which is why it's called the zero principle. Now, here is our first method. When there's a 1, in front of the squared term. That is, there's an invisible one there. Normally I wouldn't write it, but I am going to write it. So that we can say over here, we're going to use the A equals one method. And what that says is this. When you have a one in front of the squared term, this is called the leading coefficient. So I'm going to be a little official here and say when. And these notes will be available to you, so you don't have to take notes, but you certainly can. And depending on your learning style, it would be better for you to take notes or not. Again, that's a personal thing. OK, so when when there is an invisible one, so I'm just going to say when there is a one in front of in the front of the squared term. In front. Of. the squared term, whoop, okay, squared so that and now we get official. Let me scroll up so I can see better and you can see better. So that the leading coefficient is one. All these numbers are called coefficients, that is, the one in front of the t squared and the eight in front of the t, those are called coefficients, and the number in front of the highest power term is called the leading coefficient because it's in front. So this is when that's a one, the a equals one method is called, is called the A equals one method, and here's what you do. I mean, it's nice to know what you do if there's a one leading coefficient. Okay, you're gonna take the, take the constant at the end. Take, con that's negative nine. Take constant, a constant is a number without a variable. Take constant on far right. That's where it should be, if it's there at all. And factor it. Well, we'll leave it there. And factor it, and then I'll tell you what to do with it. So negative nine. And that will equal one times negative nine and three times negative three. 
and negative one times positive nine and well, negative three times three. You really didn't have to write that over. It's the same thing as that. What I have to do now here, this we could consider this our first step. When the leading coefficient is one. All right, now I need to find what's called the factor pairs. Each of these is two numbers, therefore it's a pair. The factor pairs are numbers that when you multiply them, you get back negative nine. So one times negative nine is negative nine. Three times negative three is negative nine. Negative one times positive nine is negative nine. Negative three times positive three is negative nine. These are all factors of negative nine. So two, find the factor pair that is one of these four groups of numbers, find the factor pair Scroll up. It's really hard when it gets that low to write, and I know it's also hard to see. Uh, find the factor pair that adds up to. I guess it's better to say adds to. The middle number. The middle. number which is eight as i recall eight eight is the middle number let me erase that little mark before somebody thinks it's important it's not it's a mistake okay so back to black um thank you OK, so how am I going to come up with positive eight? Ah, OK, now. If I add one plus negative nine, that'll be negative eight. And three plus negative three is zero, same here. But negative one plus nine equals positive eight. So bingo, if I had some special effects, I'd, I'd have a, a, a GIF, I guess you'd call it, that would, would explode like a 4th of July fireworks. We now have our two numbers, negative one and positive nine. Now, finally, step three, factor the sucker. Factor, I'm not going to say the sucker, factor t squared plus 8t minus 9. I'm going to do that. Here's how. Boom, 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 boom equals 0. And here's how I do it. T squared, as you know, is T times T. So I split the T squared apart. I put one of the T's there and one of the T's there. Then I use the numbers that I discovered add up to eight. And since that's a negative one, I'll write minus one. And since that's a positive nine, I'll write plus nine. So I'm gonna write this down there also. I've just made a decision to just keep going down. This is going to equal boom, 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 boom. I don't know why I like to say boom, 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 but I do. Minus one 
plus nine equals zero. That's an important part, so I should probably take that equal sign away. So factor, no, I'm not gonna. There, okay. Once you have that, you now do this. Step four. Um, set each factor, because these are factors now, write that better factor set each factor equal to zero well zero and solve i'm going to do it down here first And then I'll, I'll go back up and do it there. So I'll have T minus one equals zero there. And I usually draw a little separator down. T plus nine equals zero. And I will solve that for T. So plus one, because negative one plus one is zero. So that'll be t plus zero. Meanwhile, equals zero equals, ah, uh, 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 no, no, no. That's where I add, I'm sorry. You see what happens when you get out of order. Okay, I add one to both sides. Negative one plus one is zero. Zero plus one is one. So t plus zero equals one means that t equals one. Now we go over here, do the same thing. I need to solve for t, so I subtract nine from both sides. Bring down the t, nine minus nine is zero, so that's plus zero equals zero minus nine, which is negative nine. So T equals negative nine. And those are my solutions. Okay, so we're gonna go back up here. And this is how I would actually do it. Draw my little separator down and then t minus one equals zero, and t plus nine equals zero, and I go through that same process. I add one to both sides. Sometimes you kind of run out of room. And so we're gonna have t plus zero. Usually you don't bother to go that far. You don't actually write the zero, but I'm doing it just to be very clear. So T equals one. And down, one more. Okay, same thing over here. T plus nine equals zero, minus nine, minus nine. T plus zero equals negative nine. So T equals negative nine. Those are the solutions to the quadratic equation. So you will see down a little farther, T equals, and then a blue answer box. I didn't print this in color. Probably should have, but we'll do it now. 
And order doesn't matter. You can go in order, you cannot. Um, one, you've got to have a comma there. Negative nine. Check answer, and my math lab tells you how super your answer is. And we have solved this quadratic equation by the zero, uh, well, by the A equals one method. Let me put a box around that. The A equals one method. What is A equals one? So we're going to do a little bit more um, uh, explanation. This is the formula. The general formula. for a quadratic equation. It's the formula for a quadratic equation. Formula for, I'm gonna run out of room, quadratic. I have a question. Yes. I thought, I thought we ended with negative, negative nine, so would it not be one positive nine? No, very good thinking. We we factored negative nine. You're correct there, negative nine, because it is a minus nine. We factored negative nine into one times negative nine and three times negative three, negative three times three, and negative one times positive nine. Now, what we had to do is find which of those pairs adds up to the middle number positive eight. And the reason that, yes, yeah, so we use negative one or minus one and plus nine. Now, when I subtract nine from both sides, I end up getting a negative nine because I had to subtract it. It was a plus, but when I subtracted it, it became a minus. And over here, when I added one to both sides, I got T equals positive one, not negative one. And that can be a little difficult to deal with until you get used to doing it. So one more thing, that's what A equals one means when this leading coefficient is one, then all you do is you factor C into two numbers that add up to B. That's the shorthand way of saying it. I'm glad you asked because that is confusing and people get it wrong at first. I mean, it's very common for students in the beginning to answer, okay, negative one, positive nine is our answers, are our answers, but they're just the numbers you work with in parentheses. Then you have to solve and then you actually get the opposite sign. I was just confused because after step four, we ended with um, one and negative nine and you plugged them back in, but you plugged in um, positive nine instead of negative nine. This, like that's what confused me. I plugged in. Oh, you mean here? Yeah, it was after step four. You know how we have T equals negative right. one and T equals negative nine? Right, very good. Very, very good that you noticed that. Um, that's only because the two numbers that I added together that gave me the number I needed, I had to use those numbers and then solve. Okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Now there's one more thing I have to tell you and I've been debating in my mind. 
Look up here after we moved 9 over to the other side, so we subtracted it. If I had had the function, which I don't, but if I did, f of t equals t squared plus 8t minus 9. Now these are the solutions to quadratic equation. The solutions to the quadratic equation, but here's a new term for you. They are also, let me, one and negative nine are the zeros of f of t, that thing right there. And we're going to be talking a lot about zeros of functions. But what it boils down to is when you solve a higher order equation, that is two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight or nine, whatever um, is the highest power. Then, yes, you find the solutions of the equation but they are also the zeros of the function that you would get from here if you ignored the equal zero. And this is just a fact to remember, but it will make more and more sense if you start getting used to the idea now. And now that I have all this stuff written out, let me make a little separator there. We're just gonna do this. Okay, so the first thing I do is I notice there's a one in front of s squared, that's a good thing. It's easier. Then I'm going to use the zero principle, which means I'm going to subtract the term over here and subtract. Oh, oh that's not a C. It's an S. S is acting like the S now. OK, so I'll have 1s squared minus 8s plus 16 equals 8s minus 8s is 0. So there you have the 0 principle. When there are three terms, and the highest power is two. That's called a trinomial. So when I solve a quadratic trinomial equation, I use the A equals one method. So let me write A equals one out here. Now, if I'm gonna use the A equals one method, what that means is I take positive 16 and I'm going to factor that into two num. Well, there'll be factor pairs, and I have to find the factor pair 
that will add up to negative eight. So let me circle negative eight. Okay, so now here I go. One times 16 times and two times eight. Oops. And four times four. Okay, if I were looking for a positive eight, that would be enough, but I'm not going to get any positive numbers to add up to a negative number. So I have to try to remember that negative times negative is positive. And this is a positive 16. So my factors are also going to be negative 1 times negative 16 negative 2 times negative 8 and negative 4 times negative 4. Okay. Now, which pair adds up to negative eight? Well, I'll tell you, if you add all these together, you will find that negative four plus negative four is the only pair that equals negative eight. So that tells me that these are the numbers I'm going to use. So I go back over here. And I make two sets of parentheses. I separate the S squared into an S and an S. And then I use, nope, oh, wrong one these, negative four and negative four, so minus four and minus four. Then I set each factor equal to zero and solve. Yes, but they're identical, aren't they? So I'll get exactly the same answer. But let's go through it. I add four to both sides. Negative four plus four is zero. S plus zero equals four. So S equals four. Now exactly the same thing is gonna happen over here because they're identical. Now, something we're going to talk about soon is this. In fact, part of it is right now. You're going to see S equals, and you're going to see an answer box. You've only got one answer. You can write that for or that for, but we never write for and for. We don't do that. That would be wrong. No, the answer is only four. Now that doesn't feel right, but it's true. 
there's no need to repeat the fact that four is your only solution. But if I were to do what I did last time and to add a fact, let me draw a line there, add a fact, which is that if f of s, whatever the letter is, f of s equals s squared plus six, uh, 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 minus eight s, Well, S squared, excuse me, minus 8S plus 16. If, F of, if there is a function F of S that equals this, then Four is the zero of F of S. And four has New word, multiplicity. How many times does it happen? Two, S equals four and S equals four. So if you're talking about the zeros of functions, then four has multiplicity, two. an extra fact you're going to need to know. So this is just to help you get used to it. But this is the answer you need for this particular problem. Now let I me explain. Question. Yes. So if... This is graphed as a line. Would that just be a straight line that just ends at some point? No, it's not a straight line. It's a quadratic function. So it looks like that. Hmm. So if okay. you were graphing it, that would be the icon you would choose. It's got a low point called a vertex. And next week before the exam, we're going to be talking about how you find the vertex. It's got a vertex. And usually it will have two X intercepts. OK, but isn't for the X intercepts for that? Yeah, it is. It's going to be. Um, if this is the X axis. Then, yeah, four has multiplicity two, means this touches the x-axis, comes down, touches the x-axis at x equals four, well, s equals four, and goes back up. But you haven't learned that yet. Zeros, yeah, what I was about to say is what a zero is, a zero is, and I don't have room, I don't think. Let's see, let's try it. A zero is, maybe I'll just erase that line. How about that? That's the easy way to deal with it. A zero is, so I should say a zero, is the 
x coordinate of coordinate of the x intercept. Good. That's what it is. So in this case, four is the zero and an X intercept is always written followed by a comma and then a zero in the Y position. So it, it, it's called and. It's called a zero because. Why, why, why is it called a zero? Here's why. Because you see how I took this function, f of s equals s squared minus 8s at s plus 16 and set it equal to zero. The zero is the number you put in for the variable that makes this equal zero. So there are so many little facts to memorize. If you set the function equal to zero, which is basically what we did after we moved 8s over, we had s squared minus 8s plus 16 equals zero, and that means we're looking for the zero of the function but you'll learn more next week how that all comes together. Right now it's good to just know, oh, all this stuff is more than it looks like. A separate level of meaning. Okay. Now let's zoom through this one. Checking the time. There's a one in front of the V squared. That's a good thing. Smiley face. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. I'm going to uh, 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 subtract 28. You're going to see me do the same steps over and over again. Subtract 28 so that I have v squared plus 3v minus 28 equals zero. And I always write my zeros really close. And I suppose that could be confusing, so let's put it here. Okay, now. Um, I take negative, there's a one in front of the V squared. So I take negative 28 and I factor it. Now, here's a shortcut when, when you're dealing with a negative number. Just take 28 for a minute, positive 28. 28 equals one times 28 and two times 14, and four times seven, and then they turn around, switch. Um, okay, so, but I'm, I'm not dealing with a positive number, am I? I'm dealing with a negative, negative 28. Numbers always take the sign in front of them. There's an assumed positive sign here because there's not a negative sign. So numbers always take the sign in front of them. So this is really negative 28. 
Well, that means one of the factors has to be negative. So in this case, I'll say negative one, negative two, negative four, and then over here, I'll switch positive one times negative 28, positive two times negative 14, and positive four times negative seven. And now I need to find the pair that adds up to positive three. And that will be negative four plus positive seven. Negative four plus seven equals positive three. So we come back over here make two sets of empty parentheses, say equals zero. I set, this is a one V squared, so I se separate the V squared V and V, and then I take a minus four and a plus seven. Right here. That equals three, negative four and positive seven. Now, all I do is do this. V minus four equals zero. V plus seven equals zero. Add four, add four. Usually I just mark through the ones that equal zero. So I have V equals four. Over here, I'll subtract seven, subtract seven. V equals negative seven. And those are my solutions. V equals you can say four and negative seven or you can say negative seven comma four because that's how they'd fall on the x-axis. And that extra little fact about zeros of functions is that f of v is v squared plus 3v minus 28. And the zeros of f of v F zeros of F of V R four and negative seven or negative seven and four. I should write them the same way. Negative seven and four. And what does that mean? Well, here's what it means. Now that you know the secret, the x-intercepts, if I were to graph that, r, let me move it over a little bit and bring it up. There, r, negative seven comma zero and four comma zero with parentheses around them because they're points. And move my comma so that it doesn't look like it's part of the seven. Uh, 